Hi, Rick the Radio Guy here, once again simplifying and demystifying Cisco IPix. Today we're going to talk about doing an IPix 481 installation. Now, I've taken some liberties here. I've already loaded the IPix and the UMS operating system images. I've created a directory on each of the file systems called installer, and I've put the IPix and the UMS 481 bin files onto the machines. So let's see what we need to do to do the installation of IPix. Well, first of all, we'll go over here and we'll start with the IPix because it's going to take longer because it has a large database. So I'm in the directory. I've got my IPix 481. Let's do a dot slash IPIC. And I love file name completion. Verifying package integrity. Off we go. We'll go over here to this other VM. We'll do a dot slash um verifying package integrity. All right, as you can see, the UMS is already off to the races. It started, it's done an OS check, checked a few other things here, and it's ready to go. So let's say, yes, I am ready to do that installation. Of course, it's going to ask us to read our end user license agreement. And we will, of course, agree to it and type, yes. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And it's off and installing. IPix just finished its system check. So you sure you want to continue? Yes, indeed. Let's read the license agreement again, or we can press Q to get to the end. And yes. Now I'm going to be asked for my IPix administration password. Pick a good one. You're going to have to enter it twice. And now it wants the IPix admin user password. I use the same one. Shame on me. But it makes life easier to remember, right? This is for a demo system, not a production system. All right. Am I sure I want to continue? Yes. Here we go. Now, you notice the UMS is more than half done at this point. These, uh, these bars can be a little bit deceptive. It's not actually telling you the amount of time left. It's telling you how far it's gone in the installation process. And you'll notice that the IPix server installation stops and it hangs around 66, 67% for a long time, up there through about 72%. And that's because that's where it's actually building the Informix database and making all those entries. There's a lot of stuff going on at that point. Now our UMS over here is ready to go. It's asking if I want to reboot now. Let's say yes. So the UMS is done. Now I started this installation at 4.50 p.m. So I may pause here at a couple points just because there are some things here that take a while. I'll let you know what the elapsed time is here at, at the end of this little video. In the meantime, let's see if the UMS has recovered for us yet. Okay, well it's about 4.55 now and my UMS is back and IPix is at 58%. You really don't have to do this because IPix will do this for you, but I like to check a couple things here, like taking a look at my host file, and I see I have my UMS entry in here. If I want to make life a little bit easier for IPix, I can actually put a static entry in for the IPix server. And there are a couple things that are come in really handy for you when you get to the configuration phase for IPix. I brought over my little IPix notepad. Now I've got my IP addresses for my IPix and my UMS. I've decided I want to have a location called IPix Demo. This is one of the first things you need to configure when you're setting up IPix. I'm going to set the security up to be very low on this, meaning very simple passwords without special characters and things like that. You'd never do that in the real world, but for a demo system, it makes life easy when I go down here and look at my, my users with four character names, and I actually make the passwords the same for the demo systems because everyone can remember their name as a password. I also have decided what to call my channels, and I've set aside the multicast addresses. I'm going to assign those channels, and I've set aside the ports for them, uh, and then I've set up the multicast range for my pool here for my VTGs. And really, that's about it. Also, there's some PIN numbers down here for folks using the midlet to dial into the phone. That little bit of information is going to make my IPix installation very easy. You'll see over here, going back over to this screen, that we're still at 
and taking some time with IPix. Let's go over here very quickly and put an entry in, uh, in the host file for IPix. And we're going to call that IPix demo. Um, make sure we call it IPix again so we can do it long and short. Now, the next thing I can do here is I can actually SSH over to the IPix machine. This will help us establish some of our trust relationships while we're, we're retweeting. And it wants the password. All right. And come back over here to the UMS. And the UMS is pretty much ready. Now we're just waiting on IPix. So we're going to pause again. It's now 4.59. It's been 10 minutes. Okay, well, I went out, got a glass of water, came back, visited with a friend. It's now 5.05, and the installation just finished. So now we're asked, do we want to reboot? Yes, we do. And that system is going to go down for a reboot. SSH'd over to, the, to that IPix from the UMS system also, checking and making sure there was a, an entry in that host table. And there was. That one's closed. I can actually log out over here now. From the UMS, we're pretty much done over here. And now we need to wait for the OS to reboot here on the IPix server and for the IPix system to start. Until that time, we won't get a IPix login screen. But we're basically done now installing Cisco IPix and the UMS 4.8. It's now 5.06 p.m., basically 15, 16 minutes, and we were done. Watch for my next segment of Simplifying Cisco IPix, where we'll actually walk you through the install.